In this program, we're going to be thinking about talking to children. Interviewing in paediatrics is a special skill. It differs from the normal adult interview, as there are always two people to address, and sometimes there are three or four. To focus our thoughts, we've chosen small numbers of children in a narrow age band, all between the ages of seven and ten, and they have the common complaint of asthma. We particularly want you to look at the skills of the technique. Don't focus on the asthma itself or the order of the questions or the sequence of the interview. We've, we've taken small snippets, small pieces of the interviews. They're a little bit out of context and they're out of order, but they're chosen in that way to be a stimulus to thought and discussion. And we're particularly wanting you to think about these pieces of interview in respect to your own practice while you're watching. Engagement starts right at the beginning of the consultation with the introductions, scene setting and a bit of conversation. At this time, the reason for the meeting is set out. The aim is to get the child's interest, trust and cooperation. Establishing good rapport with the parent or carer is usually a key to this. The next stage of the interview is to find out as much as you can, both from the parent and the child. Direct questions to the child are quite appropriate, especially when the child is well engaged. Direct questions to the parent are very important. In the early part of the interview, they form the framework. Uh, and especially in the younger child, we rely on information from the parent. It's always important to consider that information obtained in this way is second-hand unless it comes as a direct quote from the child. The use of the questioning form some people may have is quite appropriate in children as it can trigger them to think about events that have happened in their own life and to actually relate them back to you in a very clear way. You have to watch out for the child who's prepared to say yes to anything and for whom this can be a, a form of leading question. Reflecting back to families is always important in an interview to ensure that you have the right idea about what they're saying. It's particularly important in interviewing children because it gives the child an opportunity to elaborate further on the point that's coming out. It's very important to be patient. Hesitations are common and if you interrupt too quickly or assume that you know what's going to be said, the family can lose the opportunity to tell you what they were in, in the process of saying. Though I've said don't interrupt the family, listen carefully for interruptions from the person who's not speaking or part interruptions and come back to those later to allow the second person to have their say. Body postures can tell us a lot and I think it would be helpful to watch the body postures while you're watching the interviews. You should notice that the relaxed postures and the fast paced interview show the, the well engaged process that the tense early phases of the interview, the doctor reacts by framing the questions in a more simple way, presenting the questions in a slower way. The body, body posture of the doctor leans more towards the child and family. There's more reinforcement, more nodding, more encouragement. The summary of these keys to the body language is to just watch for the tense eye avoidance, <laughs> lack of movement, folded arms, all of which show the defensive posture and not proper engagement. And watch out for the relaxation of the family, the synchronous movements and the nice three-way conversation as the interview is going well. Is there ever a time when you're so short of breath that you're actually wheezy with it? You know, when you make a, like a, a whistly sound with your with your breathing. When I run. When you run, you do get like that sometimes, do you? Mm -hmm. So, uh, what do you do about it? <laughs>